Well, I could talk about cinema forever. I mean, I really could. Um, people's tales go into the pictures when I was a kid. Um, people talking about the first film they ever went to see, their experiences of going to the cinema. Um, well, there's just so many and they really form part of my life and my upbringing and the tales you listen to when you're a kid with the family. Um, but sitting here and trying to remember everything makes me think, you know, how wonderful a sight like this is because I can tell some tales and I might think based on my memory that they're accurate, that they're really spot on but dates, times, everything gets mixed up in a mix, especially when you become as long in the tooth as I've become. And so what can happen is people can come onto this site and correct you, say, actually, no, it wasn't at the Mayfair, it was at the Warwick, or no, they never had a picture house on um, Park Lane called um, you know, the Majestic, that was the Jamie. And all these names evoke so much about my childhood. Um, you know, I mentioned the Majestic, I can remember queuing for hours hundreds of years ago, it seems now, when I was a young lad, I must have been about 13 or 14, to see a film called Every Home Should Have One, with an actress at the time who was famous for being, you know, big bosomed. And what she did in this film was flashed for all of four frames, her voluptuous bosom. So the queue was full of dirty owl men and pubescent boys, desperate. Why I was interested, obviously, I'll never know, but I just joined in the crowd. Um, and there are so many little anecdotes like that. But as I say, memory is a very strange thing. And I think to get an accurate history or, an, or evoke an accurate understanding of what it meant. A collaboration from the community is essential. Everyone saying, you know, clarifying what's been told, getting the facts right, you know, what it means for women to have gone the movies, what it means for men way back then is so different to now. Uh, and it was the only escape we all had. Okay, there was television when I was a child but it was the only escape. But I'm wittering on here, so I'm gonna to have to refer to my notes, I'm sorry. But um, I was trying to remember, well, I was trying to recollect my earliest memory of the movies. My dad went away to see. It was just me and my mum and my grandma, who I'll talk about later. And my mum, I must have been about three or four, I was very young, and she took me to a picture house, a, mo a cinema, that everyone must have talked about Cora Tatler. Now, at the time, it showed cartoons, so it was, you know, only made sense for my mum to take me when she was shopping in town to see a cartoon. Well, I can remember everything about it. I can remember sitting on the balcony, we were right in the front row, and you looked over. Now. People might say, was there a balcony? Wasn't there a balcony? But I can remember the bar, and I can remember sitting there and standing up and being so excited and seeing this big screen, and there was probably curtains and lights before it went on, and an atmosphere, and there was sweets, and there was drinks, and there was me and my mum sitting watching this film, and it come on, and it was Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. And I can remember looking at me mum and thinking, what is going on here? This was just, you imagine a little snotty-nosed kid, eyes wide open in this big, dark, palatial place, watching Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. And I danced, sang all the way through. My mother keep constantly grabbing me, saying, sit down, shh, sit down. Absolutely ecstatic and overawed with joy. And the film end, and I was like, more, I want more, when's it going to start again, what more? My mother was doing, well, it's finished now, and we've got to go home and have our tea and come, and I'll take you for sweets and whatever else. I wouldn't move, I clung to that bar, and she had to drag me out the movies. I was traumatised. She'd introduced me, at that tiny young age, to the most magical thing I'd ever experienced. It was an utter joy. I actually had felt the rapture and she was dragging me out. Anyway, she took me back again, obviously, because it was always used then as the means to make me be good or the means to get me to do what she wanted me to do. In fact, and I shouldn't be saying this on video, I was having a problem going to the toilet 
And I was promised that she'd take me the pictures if I had a poo. You know, that was one of the things. So cinema, yeah, it's big in my life. My next memory that I can think of, and I'm trying to be chronological because this is supposed to be a history, was being at school, primary school. I went to a school called Upper Parky, which was actually called, properly called Toxteth County Primary School. And there'll be many people who, from Liverpool who come on the site my age who remember this. And running down from my school towards Park Road, and again, I can't remember the name of the little side street, there was this old, it looked a bit church-like, uh, obviously an old Victorian building. And as we were passing the doors, which I'd never seen them before, they were open, and workies, you know, working men were carrying in boxes and stuff, and it was obviously a big storage facility. But this is way back in the early 60s. And when I looked inside, an owl fella then explained to me there was an old theatre and it had also been, as they say in Liverpool, a picture house. And I was fascinated by the place. And I always remember going past there and asking people about it. And what's interesting about that memory is that there is a huge connection between the history of music hall and theatre in Liverpool and what was to become cinema and how they interconnected. And uh, a lot of old theatres will have gone over to show in films and a lot will have just been lost to become storage facilities in the end. But uh, a tale that does the rounds in with, with me and my cousins and with the family was about uh, my granddad, my mother's father. And I can distinctly remember him telling this story. Now, it might have been a sort of urban legend that he you know, pulled out the bag, and it may not have actually been his experience, but he always said it was. And when he was very young, and let's, um, well, he was born in the 1890s, and we all know enough about the history of cinema and when we started to see films. He went to see his first film, or films, or short films, or however the presentation was made then. <coughs> And my, if my memory serves me correctly, it was somewhere on Lime Street, somewhere near the station, somewhere near the Empire. It may indeed have been the Empire. And it was a big event because apparently they'd been waiting for weeks to go and see this and saving up their pennies and whatever. And it was, you know, the biggest, biggest event ever. And the audience went in and they were crammed in to watch these silent films. Now, I guess there was someone on a piano or an organ playing music, or maybe not. And they all went in to see the film. Now, being God loved them, being very ill-educated, hard-working, very poor people, of course, after the films were shown, they all went out the door, round the side of the building, round the back to the stage door, and in their hundreds, apparently, stood there waiting for the actors to come out because they couldn't make the connection. I just thought that was such a poignant and telling tale. Now I'm gonna to have to refer to my notes now because I'm uh, getting all enthusiastic and not helping here. Um, <laughs> am I, thank you. <laughs> then again, the family tales then, yeah, to go on about the family tales, talking to me mum about cinema when I was a kid. She used to tell me that me, me nin, her mother, my grandmother, my ninny, uh, used to live for the pictures and every penny she had, she'd go and see the next film. And it transpired that they must have gone two and three times a week to matinees and whatever else. And you know, lovely terms like we used to go in the one and nines or sometimes if she'd have the money, she'd pay two bob or whatever for a better quality seat. And my mother was fascinated because she'd always get a quarter of sweet so, you know, apparently my, my grandmother in, during a movie could see off half a pound of chocolate, you know. And when they got home, there was no food on the table for me poor granddad and there'd be murder because she'd gone the pictures, kept me mother off school. You know, I think everyone gets the script here. And my mum also said an interesting thing. There was a lot of musicals that they used to like to go and see. And also, they go several times to see the same film, and this happened to me years later, but I'll tell you about that shortly. And so they watch the same film over again and again. 
but also it was the conversations that my nan, who was an avid teacup reader, and my mum said she was probably a lion owl cow, used to read the teacups, get the few bob, and then go and spend it on sweets and a cinema ticket so my mother wasn't saying nothing. And, but my nan and her mates would sit there jangling about the star's business in the way we start jangling today about, did you hear about uh, Angeline Jolie adopting the latest child or carrying on with such a one? All of that was talked about. So I was thinking, well, did me nin buy, uh, you know, film magazines or all those magazines? But my mum said she never saw any of them. And anyway, that would have been too much of an expense. So obviously me poor nin kept what few bob she had to pay for the cinema tickets. But I just found that fascinating that they talk about, um, you know, what stars were doing and what they were up to. I just thought that was so fascinating and it goes back so far. Um, I mentioned um, me going to the movies again and again and again. In my case, it happened in the 60s. And again, it was the big event that I was waiting for. And probably because by then we had television and there was information about films on TV. But somehow we'd all heard about the sound of music. And around the same time, Beatles films. But the sound of music was the most Im Im impressive to me. Again, a musical. Nothing new there with me. Um, my Auntie Rose, my godmother, my mum and all the women and all the girls in the family. And at first... They didn't even think to, to book a ticket or take me because I was a lad. And what would I want to do, go and to see The Sound of Music? Well, I took off because I'd been left out anywhere I was taken. Went to see The Sound of Music again. I was in ecstasy. I had the rapture and I watched The Sound of Music. And then for 11, I kid you not, 11 consecutive nights, the neighbour took me. My other aunties took me, anyone who I could go with took me to the Odeon on London Road when it was one big cinema. It was huge, absolutely huge, one big cinema. And I watched The Sound of Music. And I kid you not, to this very day, we are talking about memory before, but to this very day ingrained on my memory, from the opening credits to the closing credits, I can recite every line of dialogue and sing every song and nobody believes me but if you put a dvd or a video or the sound of music on the television and say go or switch the sound off i can carry on you know and to say sorry it's a silly story but that's that that that's my life with cinema there in two minutes what inspired me oh my god Right, well, it's easy. I was always taking the pictures by my mum at any, any, at the drop of a hat. And when I was, you know, two films in particular that my parents took me to see, which stay in my memory. One is a wonderful uh, experience out on a summer's day, walking down Prince's Avenue. We come up outside of the Rialto. Outside the Rialto, the film is Sammy going south. So my mum and dad, my dad went away to sea, so he'd come home, and when he was home, he'd lavish me, he'd look after me. He was a lovely, well, he still is a lovely man. And off we went to see Sammy going south, which is about a little colonial white boy in some African country who runs off and makes friends with one of the little local native kids, you know, the ethnic, ethnic sidekick. Now, looking at this film today, it's probably absolutely appalling, you know, and objectionable in every way. Hopefully it's not, and hopefully other people will have seen it. And the second one was hearing me mate's mum and dad saying they were going out for a night out to see Doctor No, the new James Bond film, on the Gormont. So I harassed me mother and father to take me to see Doctor No. And when we arrived at the cinema, um, the neighbours who were going were in there and they sort of looked at me mum as if to say you know what are you doing bringing a kid this is a grown-up thing you don't you know you let your kids go to matinees but at the, the night time they took a dim view of a child being around and i could always remember my mother and father having murder later because this neighbor had the audacity to question me mum i mentioned that because it's about cinema experiences but quite simply from a really early age my mum asked me, what do you want to be when you grow up? And I said to her, I wanted to be a priest. 
And I don't know how it come about, but effectively she said to me, um, well, when you were born, Elizabeth Taylor, and this mightn't be true, this is what my mother told me, and it mightn't be true, Elizabeth Taylor around the same time had a child. You know, we're talking about jangling about the stars. And apparently, my mum was going to call me Eddie after me dad, but Elizabeth Taylor had a child, and his name was, I think, Christopher Edward. So my mother called me Christopher. And in, in the process of explaining this, she said to me, when, I, when, when, when I, you were born, I always wanted you to grow up to be a film director. And my mum said that to me. I always wanted you to grow up to be a film director. So it stuck in my head. And, you know, as a teenager, I was bought cine cameras for a few... I mean, it was a lot of money, but, you know, they were usually second-hand and encouraged, and I just got into it that way. But, you know, my mum did say, when you grow up, I want you to be a film director. I mean, as I said before, I could go on um, with so many stories about the movies.